Welcome to our conversation. My name is Brian Ola, your host. Today I have um, Thor Holm and um, I have Gabriel Fernandez with me. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, now both of you um, did serve a military. Uh, thank you for your service. Thank so you, um, Thor, tell me um, what, what you did. So I was a combat swimming instructor. I was in the infantry and I did forensics. So during my 10 years in the Marine Corps, that's essentially what I did. The majority of the time was forensics, investigating homicides, suicides, and recovering remains. Uh, and how about you, Gabriel? I am in the Army Reserves. I do construction. Okay. Now, um, how has been your transition back um, you know, to the United States? I know a lot of the issues with veterans is, of course, you know, being engaged in the community, you know, especially you, Thor. Um, you served in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan? Both. Both. Um, and doing forensics and that sort of stuff, you might see some things that are probably disturbing. You know, how do you cope with that? Out? They taught us a black humor when I was in the military. So um, essentially, our training uh, consisted of us being able to disassociate ourselves um, from the remains in front of us. And we came up with a variety of different ways to do that. So we no longer saw them as humans. Uh, we saw them as objects. Mm. Now, now, psychologically, does that, is there any transference? You know, do you sometimes, and you know, that must be really hard to do, I would assume, um, just because, you know, seeing a human there, um, you know, how, how, how does that training work, if you don't mind going to detail? Um, okay, so, so uh, some things we did is uh, when we first joined the military, uh, what they did is they took us to a, a morgue here in the United States. And we got used to being around uh, dead bodies, uh, usually civilians. Mm -hmm. That way, when we see someone in the same uniform as us, it's not as big of a shock to us. We've already been exposed to um, hundreds of, of dead bodies prior to us getting even in country. Oh, wow. Um, and Gabriel, what has been the toughest challenge uh, for you? Um, toughest challenge, I wasn't away from home for that long, but the mm -hmm. toughest challenge is just being away from home and not having that communication having a phone to text back. Okay. Now what drives, you know, the both of you, of course you have patriotism, but you know, um, what motivates you to keep on, you know, to serve your country? Um, is there any particular uh, ideal or cause um, that really keeps you grounded? I saw myself in an army uniform from a pretty young age, so it was just something that I thought I needed to do. I don't think everyone has to, but for me personally, I just thought I owed it to myself and just to the to the rest of the world to just give up at least some of my time to, to what I think is making the world a better place. Oh, wow. How about you, Thor? Uh, friends. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone that I've grown so attached to in the military, uh, that's my motivation. A major issue in the military um, is, of course, suicide in the military. I believe, um, was it last year that there was more suicides than homicides? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the statistic. There's about 22 veterans that commit suicide every day, um, statistically. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's a big problem mm -hmm. right now in the military and especially within the veteran community because once you leave the military, mm -hmm. um, you no longer have that support structure mm -hmm. that can really help you out if you need anything. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to get that support structure and is there any recommendations you give to fellow veterans? For myself individually, mm -hmm. um, so I keep in touch with my friends. We do um, a once a month, once a month call. Uh, we all call each other all the time. Mm -hmm. We keep in touch. It's just so easy now with group chats and everything else. Mm -hmm. But um, we check up on each other all the time, and it just hasn't stopped. Oh, that's good. And how about you, Gabriel? Well, I've experienced that personally. But with everything I see with the veteran student organization, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of community and getting people together, uh -huh. just involved, to have something to do. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find that being a ten, um, you know, gives you the opportunity to connect with veterans um, uh, who, you know, are not from your infantry? Um, is being a ten itself, you know, um, is there anything you would like to change or anything you would um, prefer as a veteran uh, to make your experience here better? It was, it was kind of hard even finding about the veterans through an organization. I sort of found it by mistake when I was in CIW one day. Mm -hmm. So I think, just making it easier to find out that that group exists, because I'm sure there's people here who don't know about it. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. There's very little support for veterans here on campus. Um, there's about 250 veterans here. Um, uh, 60, 60 to 70 are students. Um, you have um, over 150 that are faculty and staff. Mm 
Um, those are the individuals who are uh, cleaning the bathrooms. Those are the individuals who are teaching classes, professors. So um, there's a large number here, but the institution, Binghamton University, just really isn't putting a lot of resources into that. We have no resource center. Uh, Syracuse, for instance, has a very large facility. Even my old community college has a very large facility, but here, I'm just not seeing it personally. Okay. Yeah, one of the major concerns actually for the essay was inclusiveness, not only around race, gender, but you know I think also veterans, and I think certain times you guys are excluded. Um, so I think that's one thing we could definitely work on as a community. Now, me and you, Thor, we take the same class, conference in the Middle East, and you definitely have a different perspective since you actually served there. Um, when looking at you know situations like ISIS. Um, what is your opinions on foreign policy at all? Um, and since it is an election year, is there any way you're leaning, not only as a student, but also as a veteran? Um, so, as a veteran, uh, which way I'm leaning, I see two candidates that stand out to me that support um, the veterans, that's Bernie Sanders and Trump. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't feel the love from um, Hillary Clinton right now. Mm -hmm. um, in, in regards to foreign policy, uh, Menya as a whole, or um, focusing on ISIS, I think ISIS is a big threat mm -hmm. that's destabilizing the region that needs to be dealt with. Um, I'm not a foreign policy expert. Mm -hmm. I'll leave that up to the individuals who are. Mm -hmm. But um, ISIS is a problem that needs to be dealt with, not just for the, the active duty, but the reserves and the, even the inactive or veterans. Okay. Now, Gabriel, you know, being a student, you know, um, and also being a veteran, is there um, a policy that you know you want your elected officials to have, or um, and which way are you leaning towards um, the election? I think in terms of policy, one of the most important things I want to see is just extending benefits for mm -hmm. for veterans, especially people who've been in combat. Mm -hmm. I think those are people who should be focused on mm -hmm. and make sure they're okay. Okay. Now, in terms of um, there was that huge VA scandal, um, have you two experienced any hardships, you know, in VA hospitals? I have a cousin; he's, he's in the Marines himself. And um, uh, do they take care of you in terms of when you go to a VA hospital? Do you have any concerns locally? Or? I've never experienced anything in the VA hospital, but I, I've heard good and bad things. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the VA personally. Um, I, I'd rather to see it replaced or repealed or something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's one idea that's being floated around, and that's where veterans have a card. You could just go to any local hospital, mm -hmm. and then the government would just send them money there. Mm -hmm. um, that way, this VA doesn't have to be the middle end. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I'm not a fan of the VA personally. Yeah. And you know, uh, even if, for example, you just said you know um, the VA might might not be the right place for certain people, and being in the university um, in Binghamton. Um, a lot of veterans may need mental health, um, you know, concerns. They may need uh, mental mental health assistance. Um, do you think the school provides that um, in terms of having availability? We, of course, we have, um, you know, Harpers Ferry. Uh, but in terms of mental health, uh, if you had a friend that needed help, um, do you think the school's offering adequate resources? Uh, no, uh, I don't know of any um, psychologists here. Um, that are giving that opportunity to veterans. It would be great if, if there was that, if there was a hypothetically a veteran resource center that had the capability to handle not just the GI Bill, the post 9 11 GI Bill, the finances, but also the veterans' needs psychologically as well. A place where they can go for help, not just for school. Mm -hmm. How about you? I think that what Thor said is entirely right. You need to have someone that, if you go to talking about a problem, you don't have to explain what you're experiencing in the military. You need someone who's trained and can understand, like, hey, here's where I'm coming from, here's my problem. And they don't ask a million questions to find out because they already know what the military is. Mm -hmm. So that's what a, better, a resource center would do. Okay, so having somebody who served in the military obviously would be very beneficial um, to, the, to your experience. Now, uh, what is your major um, for our audiences? Uh, PPM, so Harper College. Uh, so philosophy, politics, and law, and how about you? I'm a history major. History major? Now, what made you want to pursue um, these subjects? Uh, PPL, um, the way I came across philosophy, politics, and law is I came here, uh, just right here from Broome Community mm -hmm. College, came over here with a background in criminal justice, that's what I got my associate's degree in, mm -hmm. and I've always just wanted to expand my knowledge while 
focusing on a broad array of subjects without having to be a subject matter in one. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, philosophy, politics, and law gave me that ability. I'm taking so many political science classes, philosophy classes, studying law, and it's fun. Okay, and how about your history? I've just always been interested in how, how we got to where we are now. Mm -hmm. you like how people lived, say, 1,500 years ago, what they did, how the world worked, how people talked to each other. I've just been interested in learning how we got to where we are now. Interesting. All right, and um, is there any last thing, any aspirations that uh, you want from Binghamton? Um, what are your goals after Binghamton and during your process here? I just got accepted to grad school here, so oh, okay. I'm going to be pursuing a, a master's in public administration. Mm -hmm. And my whole goal um, in the next two years when I'm going to be here is by bringing awareness to what a veteran resource center could do for not just veterans here at SUNY Binghamton, but mm -hmm. within the whole SUNY system. Oh, wow, okay. And how about you? I only have a few months left in graduating, but before I do that, I want things like a, a veteran mentor program, veteran resource center, just small things like that that would just make at least a little difference in a few people's lives. Okay, great. All right, well, Thor, thank you thank for you. joining me. Gabriel, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you for joining us.